flesh itself is called mortality and the word mortality means corruption we are mortal men it is the addition of God to us that makes us the God kind every time we journey in departure from God we are journeying back to mortality we are journeying back to our frailty we are journeying back to our weaknesses the advantage we have in time is our fraternity with the Holy Spirit it's not given to man that walketh to order his steps so we saw in the first service the kind of people that have the stature the status and the capacity to bear witness for God in this world of corruption We saw that the only way God can be seen and manifested through us is when we become the recipients of fire. And we said fire is not youthful zeal. Youthful zeal is a reality that runs on the economy of the flesh. It's an ability that we have because of our youthfulness. Beautiful as it is, it cannot meet the demands of heaven. That is why God is not moved whether you are young or old. Because everyone that must serve Him must serve Him on the strength of the supply of the Spirit. He said, having received a kingdom that cannot be moved, Hebrews 12, 28, He said, let us serve God with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Let us receive grace to serve God. That means God is not moved whether you are young nor you are old. It is the grace that you appropriate that determines the quality of your service. And we said this morning that the reflection of the fact that we have made contact with God is the fire of God that burns on our inside. So we said in the last day, the Bible said, the witnesses of God shall be flames of fire. The word ministers in that scripture, Hebrews 1 verse 9, is the word public servants. He maketh his angels spirits, but it's public servants. He makes them a flame of fire. That means you cannot carry God to the public except you are clothed with fire. Remember, we are not called to manifest God in the church. We come to the church to receive strength, equipping, so that we can go out there. He sent the church to the world. He said, go into all the worlds and make disciples of every nation. The word world used in that scripture is the word aeon. Go to your own sphere of influence and make disciples of all nations. So when we come to church, we come to receive fire. And take to our world. The fire is not necessarily manifested in church. The reason we do what we do is because we don't carry genuine fire. So we come among people that are religious like us. So we make a show. Have you not noticed that every time people fall is in the church? How many people have you interacted with in the market that went under the power? Meanwhile, they came with knives and guns to arrest Jesus. He said, who sit here? They say, Jesus of Nazareth. He said, I am he. And the people went back and fell. You have power when the terrorist sees you and goes down. This was the kind of dimension that men like Archbishop Benson in Tahusa manifested. As patriarchs of the calling of God in Africa. That we will look upon them. These guys went into shrines and they carried Jesus there. Myself and a friend engaged a sister last week. She was in Abuja. A witch struck her in Abuja. And she had to relocate to Kaduna. And five pastors that wanted to deliver her traveled from Abuja to Kaduna. And they were there for one month. The witch did not need to travel from Kaduna to Abuja. He knew what to do to afflict the lady. But men of God traveled from Abuja to Kaduna to meet the lady and for one month they are still struggling 
because we don't have the tangibility of what we profess. God is not moved because we are speaking boldly about Him. You must be able to communicate His reality. So we said, fire is not screaming loud. Fire is first of all walking in blazing holiness. Because your life has been seeded to God as a sacrifice. We say fire is an insatiable appetite for God. Because you are hungry for Him and His presence. We said fire is a jealousy for God and His kingdom. I am very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. We said fire is fruitfulness. Living a life that reaps harvest for the kingdom. And we said fire is a dogged belief in God that makes you risk your life and don't care because you know that your God is able to deliver you. And even if he doesn't, you will not bow to the status quo of your world. You will be bold to stand even if you are the only one standing. You are not doing what you are doing because a crowd is doing it. You are doing what you are doing because if you are the only one, you will still do it. Jesus began ministry as one man. And he went out as a burning fire. People joined themselves to him. And when all of them ran away from him, he still continued with his witness. His motivation is not the crowd. There is something he carried on his inside. Started out as a single individual. They followed him. When persecution came, they all ran away. He was still the way he was. People are not his motivation. There was something at work on his inside. Genuine fire. I want to show us one way of making contact with the fire of God. And then I will show us four other ways of keeping the fire. Because most of us, once and again, have caught the fire of God. Most of us will look back and we remember 10 years ago when God encountered me. When I was on fire. In Job chapter 29 verse 2. Job said he looked back and he remembered when he knew the Lord. In verse 3 he said, As I was in the days of my youth, when the, 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 the secret of God was upon my tabernacle, he said, When by light I walked through darkness. I met with God. He said, "By light, then nothing was strong enough to afflict him. Nothing was strong enough to quench his motivation. He did not notice darkness. He could fight iniquity with his word. When we appear in Zion, we will look like the burning ones in heaven. When John showed up in heaven, the angels knew him like one of them. John wanted to kneel down." In Revelation 19.10 to worship one of them. He said, no, I am like unto you. I am one of your brethren. That you are on earth makes no difference. On earth, you still carry the dimension that the holy ones in heaven carry. Because what was raging in you is as pure as the crystals of heaven. Men walking on earth like entities of Zion because they were born in. Jesus, the Bible said, while he was walking in Galilee, he said, the Son of Man, which is in heaven. Whether heaven or earth, the dimension is constant. He carried the disciples to pray in Matthew 17 verse 2. And Elijah and Moses came from Zion. And he stood among them, born with flames. So you don't need to go to heaven to be like God. There were men that walked on earth like immortal entities among humankind. Because they born with the flames of the Holy One. How do you catch the fire of God? I told us you can't set yourself on fire. That's why you must give everything you have to preserve it. If it is lost. <laughs> Most of us here once upon a time. We could stand on our feet and pray from night to morning. And it looks as if sleep is no longer part of our existence. But something happens. And then we want to pray the night. 15 minutes we are already dozing. <laughs> Something has gone wrong. Some of us, we could come to church every day of the week. We were leading the evangelism squad. But a point came when if they made the announcement alone, we get offended. 
Some of us were at a point where we could give everything we had. If they say give, we are the first. But now we come to a point where if they as much as make an announcement, we get offended. Something has gone wrong. There is a denaturation on the inside. What you need is the restoration of factory setting. And what God uses to activate it is fire. He said in Malachi chapter 3 verse 2 that the Lord will appear in his sanctuary and he will call God the sons of Levi so that they can bring an offering acceptable before the Lord. How do we catch the fire of God? It's by encounters. Without encounter, a people can never be set on fire. We be labor in futility. The Bible said the labor of the foolish wearied every one of them because they know not how to enter the city. I studied the life of the prophets of old and I saw that these men could give up everything to keep meeting with the Lord. You will see some of them depart, go to live in caves. They will never show up until God has spoken. And every time they show up, you will hear them say, and the word of the Lord came to me. And the word of the Lord came to me. The reason they were invincible is because they understood the importance of encounter. The king saw Daniel. He said, we make you one of the president, the president over all the princes in the realm. And Daniel said, no. Make Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Me, I will sit at the gate. He saw something that was more precious to him than everything life had to offer. He needed to see his face every morning. He said, as we behold him, as we behold him, we are changed. The reason every man on fire is not on the street is because they understand the secret. People don't burn because they are zealous. And the energy for spiritual reality is not in the flesh. Most times when we shake ourselves, it's ATP we are exhausting. When you shake yourself for 30 minutes and the energy from Gary is over, you will discover that you will be on your knee, you will sit down. Meanwhile, a man of fire is praying. After two hours, he is adding gear. After four hours, he is ascending. After seven hours, he is still roaring. You will know that what is at work in this person is not captured within the frame of mortality. He is drawing strength from somewhere that is far from the borders of human dwelling. The men of old understood the place of encounter. So they lived their lives perpetually pursuing encounter. There are four major kinds of encounter that bring fire. The first type of encounter that brings fire is encounter with God. Moses, out of his, ran from Egypt. And he was in the wilderness for 40 years. Being a shepherd, carrying sheep around. This is a deliverer. But when Pharaoh raged, the fear of Pharaoh drove him away from Egypt. The guy forgot his primary assignment. This was a young man who was zealous, killing Egyptians to bring deliverance to Israel. Something happened. Pharaoh threatened him. And every iota of confidence that was born in the flesh vanished. That is the disadvantage of flesh. Anything superior to you will quench you. But if you draw from heaven, even the mightiest of men cannot withstand you. He said, who is this mountain that stands before Zerubbabel? Not by power, not by might, by the spirit. So if it is by the spirit, a mountain becomes a moon. He said, when Israel went out of Egypt, he said, Judah was a sanctuary. He said, the mountains fled, they skipped like rams before him. They were coming and the flame of fire was moving ahead of them. The mountains skipped, skipped before them. He said, Chapter went backward. They came by fire. He said, The pillar of fire went after them in the, in the night and the pillar of cloud in the day to show them the way that they should go. The reason circumstances look big is because you are spending from your flesh. So naturally, you will compare your strength with what you are seeing and you reason in the head. But if you draw strength from Zion, when that thing comes, something leaves from your inside. Bishop David Oedeko told a story. How that he came back and exhausted from the mission field. And here was his wife, certified by a cousin doctor, that she already had miscarriage. Bleeded! What 
is the risk. If you don't evacuate her, there will be crisis. So this is not a place where you talk boldly. Bishop said, it cannot happen. Let me have my food. And the matter was never discussed. Your wife will die. She has bread. There is blood in the, in the, in the, in the, in the womb. If she's not evacuated, it's a crisis. It cannot happen. That is not boldness. That is an economy in the spirit. And for that dimension to be quickened on your inside, you must encounter him that dwells in the spirit. This is why Christianity begins in the spirit, not in the flesh. If you have not seen him, you cannot withstand death. The Bible said the reason Moses came to withstand Pharaoh was because he saw him that was invincible. First, you must encounter God for yourself. Dr. T. L. Osborne that shook the world for Christ. He said they had four encounters. One of them was with the Lord. Something changes. A coward becomes a veteran. They saw the apostles, the Bible said, in Acts of the Apostles 4.23. After they threatened them, they came and spoke with boldness. And he said they took note that these men were with the Lord. Seeing that they were unlearned men, and some talk like this. These men have seen something. And they carried that fire until all of them were killed. They never said no. They didn't even contemplate it. What was happening? There was a rage. They saw the Lord. Many were preachers in that generation. Another man showed up on his way to Damascus and he saw fire from heaven. Saw, saw. Why persecutest thou me? And he told, he said, who are you, Lord? He said, I am Jesus Christ, whom thou persecuted." Rise up and go into the city. You'll be told what you must do. From that day, from that day, a man that was fighting the church turned to become a vibrant apostle. He had an encounter. What will change your life and turn you around radically is an encounter with the Lord. Every believer must commit his life to God until he sees the reality of God in his spirit. When you see men doing exploit, it's not a function of intelligence. There are many people that think ministry is connection. Some travel in with money, they spend it. You see people gather here, you think it's about studying the Bible. It's when you start a church that your arrogance will come down. You know, as a young man, I was so arrogant until I collided with many rocks. I see people doing things and I'm like, ah. Uh -uh. I can do better than this. <laughs> do better. I started a cell and for eight months we were three. And these three people, I will have to call them that day and make them feel happy. I need to, I need to make them feel happy so that in the evening they can come. If I try to reach them, they will be so offended. <laughs> you have to lure them. Even on Sunday, you will need to call them before they come to church. And I now realize that the man of God was not doing what he was doing because he read the Bible. I know there is something happening. I had to go back and ask God for mercy. You know, when you are irresponsible in the kingdom, you can afford to be arrogant. When God gives you a responsibility, you will see the need for encounter. You will see the need. When God saw Moses and he said, go back to Pharaoh. Pharaoh! That was when he knew the significance of encounter. But if he had not seen the Lord, if he had not seen the Lord, there wouldn't have been deliverance through his life. God would have raised deliverance through other means, but it would not have been Moses. Fire begins with an encounter with the Lord. Exodus chapter 3 verse 1 to 5. You see, Moses carried the sheep of his father-in-law, Jethro. And he went to the backside of the desert, even unto Horeb, and there he saw a bush burning that was not consumed. Fire. How did Moses remain on fire? He kept seeing the Lord. In Exodus 19, verse 24. Come up, Peter. Exodus 24, verse 2. Come up, Peter. Exodus 24, verse 12. Exodus 34 verse 2 Come up hither The man kept beholding 
Bishop Oedepo will say, even if you are a drunk, the wine you drank last week is not enough to intoxicate you today. You must keep drinking to be drunk. So you don't meet God and run away and say it's over. You must keep drinking to be drunk. Ezekiel was among the captive. Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 1 to 5. He said, I was among the captive by the river Kabar. He was a prisoner until he saw something. He said, I saw visions of God. I saw visions. Instantly, the man became a prophet. In chapter 2 verse 1, he said, as I saw him, I fell like a dead man. But as he spoke, his word entered into me and carried me to my feet. That day, he rose up not as a captive, he rose up as a prophet. Your infirmities are not important. There is something you need to see. If you are lukewarm, it's because you've not seen something. There are things you see that make you go mad. The disciples said, We cannot but speak of the things we have seen and heard. We cannot. That's why they were on fire. Do you know the people they were confronting? In those days, the Sanhedrin have the right to make a mess of you. They can expel you from the synagogue. Meanwhile, the civilization of Israel is around the synagogue. If you are expelled from the synagogue, you are not a citizen then. The Sanhedrin have the power to expel you. Did you not read John chapter 9? When Jesus healed the man born blind and they called the parents, he said they were afraid of talking because they didn't want to be expelled. This man stood before the Sanhedrin and said, We cannot but speak of the things we have seen and heard. You see a man born in fearlessly for God, he has seen something. He has seen something. You have not seen anything, you will be fearful. He has seen something. Encounter is the key for fire. The precursor of spiritual fire is encounter with the Lord. The second encounter you must have is an encounter with his word. Samuel, a toddler in the temple, oppressed and fidgeted by the sons of Eli, because the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. They lived in iniquity. They desecrated the temple of the Lord and the altars of God. Samuel was a young little boy among them. How would this man ever walk in righteousness, in holiness and in purity? There was no way his destiny could ever find expression. This is a Nazarite that the mother had committed to the Lord. But he had come into a civilization that is bound and encased in iniquity. These guys were arrogant. That the Bible said when the sacrifices were made, the priest, the, the priest is supposed to dip a fork into it. Whatever he carries is his portion. They will come and collect it from you. They had no fear for God. It was their iniquity that brought about the reality of Ichabod in scripture. This is where Samuel found himself as a teenager. How will this boy rise without corruption? He needed an encounter. And in 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 21, the Bible said, The Lord appeared again in Shiloh. The Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. So Samuel grew up in Hades, but he was a righteous man. Until in his old age, Samuel will speak before the Israelites that I served the Lord as a child. Now I'm gray-headed. Let one of you say that I took his ass. There was no accusation against him. How is it possible? He had an encounter with the word of God. In Luke 24 verse 32, the men that were going to Emmaus, as Jesus spoke to them, after Jesus left, they told themselves, did our hearts not burn? Did our hearts not born while he speak? When the word of God comes alive, you are quickened on the inside. That's why Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. The word we speak about is not the logos, it's the light of the word of God. The revelation of the word. The revealed word of God. That's the food of the human spirit. The reason is because you were created by the word, so you will live by the word. It's, it's an operation in the spirit. You see, this thing is a bit difficult to explain. 
Because do you see a, a photocopy machine? When you put a blank paper and the light passes through, everything that was in the paper in the machine is duplicated upon the blank paper. That's how knowledge is communicated in the spirit. Knowledge is communicated in the spirit as light. So when the God, word of God is quickened on your inside, God is deposited there. So you will do business with the word of God until he comes alive. That's why Jeremiah in Jeremiah 15, 16, they say, I did find thy word. I was reading the Torah for many years, but a point came when I found thy word. And he said, the word of God became the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. So that guy could be thrown into a well and he's singing in the well. That guy could be cast into the wilderness and the wilderness to him is a palace because he's no longer conscious of mortal men. There is something walking on his inside. It's called the songs of songs. Men who are on fire for God, you see it playing on your inside every morning. Sometimes you wake up around 2 a.m. in the night, you want to go and ease yourself. While you are yet going to the bathroom, then you are hearing, Everybody sing hallelujah. Jehovah, you are alive. So while you were sleeping, your spirit man was alive. Because the spirit of man doesn't sleep. He was created in the image of God. And him that keepeth Israel, neither sleep nor slumbers. When a man is alive, the word of God is working on his inside. It's an operating system. It's like a dynamo. When it's activated, everything comes alive. An encounter with the word of God. If you've not had an encounter with the word of God, you can't sustain fire. In Leviticus chapter 6 verse 12, the Bible said the fire on the altar must not be put out. Why? He said the priest must put wood on it every morning. You must eat it every day. My son, attend to my word. Proverbs 4.20 Let it not depart from thy heart. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. They are life to them that find them. The energy of God is quickened by his word. How much of the word of God is in your spirit? When you see a man dying, check the word of God is no longer an economy on his inside. There are not many parameters to look at. If you see a man living in sin, check. The word of God is no longer alive. No wonder the apostle said in Acts chapter 6 verse 4, we will not give ourselves to tables. We resist the temptation. We will constantly give ourselves to prayer and the word. An encounter with the word is the key for lasting fire. You want the fire of God to stay alive. Listen, most of the things we do operate on the frequency of our emotions. That's why you are excited in church. You go home, the next thing they say, house rent. Your joy diffuses. You are excited in church, you are jumping. You go home, the next thing there is no food. You begin to rake, quarrel, roar and scream. So it's inside. The life in the spirit begins from inside. You leave it from inside out. You can be happy about things around, but joy is in the spirit. That's the difference between joy and happiness. Things can make you happy, but joy comes from within. And it is born by the word of the Lord. Encounter with the world. Nathaniel. In John chapter 1 verse 45. The guy had lost hope in everything. These guys, they waited for the Messiah until they were tired. So they were doing their business. John chapter 1 verse 40 to 42. And even when they told him Jesus had come, the Messiah had come, he said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? The guy said, come and see. Alright. He went reluctantly. And he showed up. And Jesus said, behold an Israelite in whom is no God. You know what the world does to you? The world does not speak to you by what your circumstances have made out of you. The world speaks to your reality. That's why the angel of the Lord will come to Gideon and say, Go in this thy might. Which might? This is a guy that was hidden. Hidden. <laughs> Dressing floor in a wine press. Because the Midianites came for their crops. So he carried his own crops and went to hide in the wine press so that they would see him. 
And then someone came from Zion and said, Go in this thy might. Where is the might? The guy was speaking to his reality in Zion. Nathaniel was fed up. Jesus said, Behold an Israelite, in whom is no God. And the guy said, How do you know me? He said, While you were under the fig tree before Nathaniel called you, I saw you. And he said, Thou art the Christ. Thou art the Messiah, the Son of the Living God. You think you are dead. You think you cannot pray. Wait until a word is speaking. The day a word is speaking, energy will come from the capsule of that word that was speaking on your inside. There was a time when I was looking for money. I called my friends. Everybody was giving excuses. So what kind of thing is this? You know, when you try everything, it doesn't work. You come back to God. The proof that you are grown is that you start with God. You don't start with men. When you are a babe, you start with other things. And as I began to meditate on the word of God, and the word was quickened on my inside, he said, Woe unto the man that put his trust in flesh, for the arm of flesh shall fail. I was like, Ah, have I put my confidence in flesh? He said, He shall be like the heat in the wilderness. He will not see good when it cometh. Part places of the wilderness. Is like a, a part place of the wilderness that is not inhabited. As I was like, what? The next thing I heard again, he said, his heart has departed from the Lord. I know that. I said, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The word came alive again. But blessed is the man whose trust is the Lord. I shouted immediately. I said, I don't need anybody. Before I finish the prayer, I received an alert, and I got five times what I was asking for. When the word is quickened, everything obeys. Bishop Wedepo say, if God speaks, everything hears him. Everything, including your mountains, including your circumstances. He said, they that are dead shall come to life. Because they shall hear the voice of the Son of God and live. Encounter with the word is a sustainer of spiritual fire. That's why you look upon it every morning. He said the priest must put wood on it every morning. The word of God is not what you do because you went for a crusade and they said something that scared you. You wake up with it. You eat it like bread. Many don't have a business with the world. That's why their life fluctuates. Today they are on fire, tomorrow they fall. Next tomorrow they are on fire. And they keep asking you, what do I do to sustain fire? Make the word of God your friend. The Holy Ghost told me, I will make you an ambassador of fire. But the word of God must be like, must be to you as a as drip to a dying, a dying man. You eat this thing. When we discuss subjects like this, it's good to do it exegetically. See it the way it is in scripture. Take it like that and you will see the change in your life. It will rattle the foundation of your belief system. There will be an alteration in your paradigm because you've seen it. You've seen these things are eternal recommendations. It is the wisdom of God that profess this recommendation. Paul said to Timothy in First Timothy 4:13, He said, Until I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, and to doctrine. Let these things not end in your life. He said, Then in verse 16, you will save thyself and them that hear thee. When the devil came to Jesus, how did Jesus withstand him? Everything the devil says, Jesus speaks a word. You don't know. The scriptures Jesus was quoting were unfamiliar scriptures. He was quoting from Psalm 91, Exodus 8, Exodus 10. He was a master of scriptures. The Bible said in Luke chapter 4 verse 16 that as he went, he went into the synagogue, he picked the scroll to read as his custom was. That is the word of God, as his custom. I thought the Bible said the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. He ate the word of God every day. He did business with it. So there is no, there is no, there is no, no, no weak moment with him. Every time there is a challenge, before you think, the word jumps out. Before you think, the word jumps out. You know that you have become invincible. Encounter with the word. The third encounter you have is the encounter with the Holy Ghost. Were with Jesus for three and a half years. He didn't tell them to jump out because they have learned principles. Most of us begin ministries, begin businesses, 
because we learn principle. Did you not notice that somebody has pure water factory and he's a billionaire? And your own pure water factory cannot exceed 10 bars. There is a spirit that energizes things on earth. Human vessels are channels through which spirits manifest themselves. If you don't have an encounter with a spirit, your principle will become a body. I told people that what we call principle is the life of spirit expressed through those that find them. You must have an encounter with the Holy Ghost. Jesus, who was the world for 30 years, was renowned as a carpenter. Full of the world, but what? A carpenter. Because he needed an encounter with the Holy Spirit. And when he came from the Mount of Temptation, the Bible said in Matthew 4, 14, he returned in the power of the Spirit. Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good. He was not doing good because he was the Son of God. He was doing good because he had every daily encounter with the Holy Spirit. The disciples wanted to jump out. They said, Tarry in Jerusalem. The Tarry you are going to, I know it. I saw Satan fell like lightning from heaven. I know the princes that rule over territories. This region you are living in, anybody that prospers in God, have broken through the canopy of darkness in this realm. Because the Bible calls him the God of this world. Every territory is distributed by principalities. If you succeed by God, it means you have broken through their influence. Every man succeeding for God has broken through the power of darkness. It is a warfare. That's why Paul said we wrestle not against flesh and blood. There are beings that will suppress you. They will force you to walk in iniquity. They will force the works of your hand not to prosper. The only way you can challenge them is if you are also invigorated by a spirit that is older than them. And only the Holy Ghost is older than the, eight, the entities that fell from heaven. Tarry in Jerusalem, Luke 24, 49, until you are endued with power. And the disciples, the cowardly disciples, hid themselves in the upper room until an encounter with the Holy Ghost came. Suddenly, they opened the door and they went out. These men were afraid before the day crowd was gathered. It was the day the crowd gathered that they had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. And they went out. And they began to talk to everybody. They never cared who was listening. What? How dare you do what you are doing? You are drunk. And Peter stood up by the Holy Ghost. You will always hear the Bible say, Peter, full of the Holy Ghost, stood up with the eleven. And he said, don't think that these men are drunk with wine. For it is just 9 a.m. in the morning. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, that in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Didn't he know that scripture before? Yes, he did. But he needed an encounter with the Holy Spirit. When the encounter came, the resources of God was imparted. So the scripture he knew became bullets in his mouth. Many don't have any encounter with the Holy Spirit. It's not good enough to listen to a message and preach it. You will be in trouble. Every message you listen to should drive you to the presence of God. This thing is not, intellect, it's not an intellectual business. Your mind is involved in, in the business, but it's beyond the internet. It is born in the spirit. And many people will take it for granted. God forbid, but I have seen many Christians. They told them about the world. They took it for granted until they had problem. The day you, the, the person goes to the hospital and they say you have cancer. That's the day he wants to read the whole Bible. You are behind. Many people take it for granted because it doesn't sound philosophical. We are a generation that pursues knowledge. You talk, come and you start to talk about the patterns of the heavens, the line that govern the realm. Then everybody, <laughs> especially the young people, sit on this world and eat it like bread. That is what will save you in the day of crisis. The Bible says if you faint in the day of trouble, your strength is little. Not because God is not there. God will be there, you will faint. 
because he has played his part by giving you his word. It is the business you do with the word that determines how lasting your life will be on earth. As boring as these things may sound, these are the areas where the devil will fight you. The devil will always fight you at the point of your interaction with the world. You can watch a movie for 10 hours, carry the Bible to read. You will find yourself sleeping after 10 minutes. Because movie is part of the distraction that will make you not to fulfill your destiny. But every time you look upon the word of God, you want to travel in the direction of your destiny. He said we should behold the world, which is the perfect law of liberty. You find who you are in Christ. Encounter with the Spirit. God is photographed into your life. And everywhere you go, you become a reflection of God. The last encounter among the four that I'm giving you this morning is encounter with men of God. There are many men you meet, your life is turned around. Most times, arrogance will not let us accept it. It is a fact. God met Paul. Acts of the Apostles 9, 2 to 4. And God told Paul, go to the city, you will be told what you should do. I thought if you met Jesus, it's enough. Jesus directed Paul to meet a man. And he went to Ananias. I thought if I meet the Lord, I've come to the end of my journey. It is the Lord that directed him. Rejoin and had an encounter with, with Jesus. And after talking with Jesus for a long time, Jesus now told him to understand this encounter. He should go and meet Bob Jones. I have met you, the God of all flesh. You are now directing me to a man that is limited. What do you mean? Jesus said to understand this encounter, go and meet Bob Jones. And when Rejoiner came to meet Bob Jones, Bob Jones told him, uh, from what I saw yesterday in the spirit, I know that Jesus visited the earth. So your coming at this time shows that you are the one Jesus came to. So there are men that will sit in their room and know when Jesus came to the earth. <laughs> and before Rejoiner began to speak, he said the five things Jesus showed you is the fivefold ministry of God. You will activate men in the fivefold ministry. What? You were not there when I saw Jesus. How did you know? Ananias was not there when Jesus met Paul. But he came, he said, Brother Paul, Brother Saul, he said, Rise up. The God that you met. What? Those guys are custodians, they are gatekeepers. Do you know why? Where God encountered Paul was within the radar of Ananias. So everything God does there, he will tell Ananias. Because Ananias is a gatekeeper. There are men that. If you enter Port Harcourt, you will not prosper until you connect with them. If you like, say whatever you want to say. You will struggle for 30 years before wisdom speaks to you. That region where Jesus met Paul was Ananias' region. Did you not read? When God wanted to destroy Sodom, he came to meet Abraham. And Abraham was negotiating the destiny of Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom was within his territory. God of heaven cannot do anything in Sodom until he talks to Abraham. He said, I will not do anything except I reveal it to what? My servants, the prophets. They are the keepers of the integrity of God in the earth realm. You must have encounter with men. Because men are keepers of certain dimensions of God. God doesn't waste resources. When he told the story, he was in Philadelphia. Kenneth Copeland, that Papa Kenneth Copeland was in Philadelphia. And he spoke against the Nihil. And he fell sick instantly. That's the father of faith in the world today. Even great faith giants like Bishop Oedeko are submitted to Kenekobla. In this world today, if you talk anything against Kenekobla, your faith will crumble. You will. You know, we are young people. We, are, we, are, we, we have enough energy. When you grow old, you will understand the systems of this kingdom. You will obey them. Mighty Kenneth Copeland spoke against Benihim and he took him. He used everything about faith that he knew it didn't work. And he went back to the Lord and said, why am I not being healed? And he said, you touched my servant Benihim. What? The same way you are the gatekeeper of faith, Benihim is the gatekeeper of health. The angels of healing in this world, they walk with Benihim. 
if you touch him, your health will be withdrawn. I give it to receive it with your eyes. Benihim received invitation from Ora Robots. Before Ora Robots left this world, he was the custodian of the healing anointing. These men are systems. God himself consults with them to do matters that they watch over. I will not do anything until I consult my servant, the prophet. Kenneth Copeland had to drop his faith confession, drop his seed sowing, drop his meditation. He went to Benihim and apologized. And instantly he was healed. Most times the reason we can't go far is because we use our tongue against the Lord's anointed. Some of those fathers you go on Facebook and you talk against. You are joking. Somebody wrote something on Facebook about Bishop Wedeku. I know that I began to pray to God to have mercy. I read a story about Reverend Dr. Maupa. A young man spoke against him and he said, What? Me? He said, That your tongue will be removed today. He didn't pray to God. The guy was going home. He had an accident. The glass of the car cut off his tongue. Did you not read about Moses? When Korah, Nathan and Abira rebelled against him, Moses went to God and said, Have not respect unto their prayers. What are you talking about? Are they praying to you? So a man can tell God not to listen to the prayer of another person. Yes. Ranking in the spirit. Start up in the spirit. Ranking in the spirit. Have not respect unto their prayers. These guys came with their censors and when they gave their incense, God did not respond. And Moses came and told them, If you die a normal death, I'm not the servant of God. Moses prescribed the kind of death they should die. He said, The ground does not open its mouth to swallow you. Then I'm not the servant of God. And God honored the words of Moses. God does not change. Most of us young people, for our destiny to speak, we must first of all repent. Because we have used our tongue to fight men that kept the heritage of God for a whole generation. You don't know those men went through death. Because you have a pulpit and you are preaching on Facebook. You talk against fathers. Encounter with men. We must, if we must be significant in this kingdom. Jesus can appear to you and refer you to a man. Jesus. Is that important? This is why encounters are too important. And we can never be without them. It is God's strategy of superimposing himself into a man. And you will have it again and again. Again and again. Either with the Lord. Or with his word. Or with his spirit. Or with men that carry those dimensions. I pursued men of God. I pursued them. Because I knew the limitations I had were many. There were many. I came from a disadvantaged place. Nobody in my family had spoken in tongues. I was the first. See how young I am. How do I have hope? I led my family to Christ. Am I a person that can preach the gospel beyond the local government? I knew I needed to connect with men. I hear Benihim is coming. I go and receive invitation. I hear Reverend Chris has a concert. I go and receive impartation. All the men you know in this country as major men is only Papa E.A. Adeboe that have not anointed me. I know the advantage of men. The Bible says some men, they fight with the strength of many. The last impartation I received, it was from Reverend Bonke of blessed memory. When he came passing on the third, I slept on the crusade ground for three days. When that hour came, there was a young lady. Whether she was falling under the power, I don't know. She hit me on the front. I said, God forbid. I came here. She came and hit me again. The lady here, he hit me five times. I said, the devil will not rob me. This one, I must collect it. As I received that touch, five months later, I sprang into the world like a trumpet screaming my name. We are products of many anointings. We are products of many encounters. As we receive, we take responsibility to find it to play. Timothy would have been nobody except as he met Paul. John Mark was being trained to be an apostle. He decided to withdraw. He thought he was anointed. Many years later, when Paul invited John Mark, he said it's good to be a deacon. 
if you break your connection and encounter with certain men, it will reduce the quality of your life. The biggest of men today are still connected to other men. It's a mystery. The Bible said, Behold, how beautiful and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in harmony. It's like the dew of heaven. Psalm 1, text 3, verse 1 to 3. It's like the ointment that flowed from the head of Aaron through his beard down to his head. There, the Lord commanded his blessings. There are men you don't touch, you cannot enter certain dimensions. Argue it, you will labor for a long time. Paul say, I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual blessings that in the end will be established. Don't they have the Holy Spirit? I long to see you that I may impart unto you spiritual blessings that in the end will be established. There are months where I meet down only praying for men of God. Because that's the only way I can touch what they carry. Paul say, you have labored with me now, you have become partakers of my grace. These men, don't they have the Holy Spirit? Don't they have the grace of God? I give it. You will labor to every young person behind you. The people you taught in Bible school, they will become pastors of the church you will attend. Then you will know that there are things that make for greatness in this kingdom. Arrogance don't take us anywhere. Encounter is the precursor of spiritual fire. Don't go looking for an angel. Don't go looking for light in the spirit. You may not encounter God, but you may encounter Him through His word. You may encounter Him through His spirit, and you may encounter Him through men. Always with a humble heart, look out for where God is breaking out from. All night, there are many today, they are, they are clogged with jealousy. You are with your friend, God decided to put His hand on him. All know what is upon his life for you to walk in it. You can brag and say, come on, is it not Victor? What, what, what is it about Victor? You will labor for a long time. You may even go and start doing the same thing Victor is doing. You are a joker. You will do it. The more you do it, the little you have to save, you will waste it. Because the man God puts his hand on is a politics of heaven. The council of the God has sat and they say, Paul, we bear this assignment. It is not open to bargain. You want to walk in it, be a partaker of His grace. Then you partake of it. Do what Paul is doing, you will die. Because he has the backing of heaven. There are things we do that change our story. You can meet a man and your story will change forever. And he mustn't even be a man of God. Be wise. Stories have been told. How Ali Kodangote connected with Benson in Dahosa in a play. And his story turned around. I heard the story how Bishop T.D. Jakes, a man, heard this message and said, What? Fly this person here now. And they brought T.D. Jakes. And he said, I'm putting you on TBN. From that day, his life changed. He was preaching Rema, but only 10 people in this village were listening. You undermine men, you are gone. You are gone. Some of us, the reason we will live old is not because we are anointed. It's because you saw an old woman and you honored her and you say, My son, live forever. My son, live forever. That word is the key for your old age. Many people in the name of anointing defy elderly people. You see a man who should be your grandfather, I say, Come here because you are the bishop. I listen to men a lot. If, some, if God is working in a man, I humble myself to follow. Because you don't know what happened before God chose that man. Don't fight it. Most of our preachers today, they only quote men that are dead. Because they see every other person in their life as their mate. How can I quote this person? Come on. People will now say, he's my mentor. You will remain there for a long time. For a long time. In Port Harcourt here, one of the princes of this land, Bishop Ibiomi, 1996, that's 23 years ago. There are men that have been in ministry for 40 years. They, they, have not, they can't even dream of what it is because he connected to Bishop David Oedeko. Today he's a general in the faith. You can't talk Christianity in Africa without mentioning his name. 
Dr. Paul Nature today that has a hundred seat auditorium. He did ministry in Otoko at, at 1996. When he's coming for meeting, they don't have up to 200 people. Today, the whole of Benue State, they had a crusade in Makodi last week. The governor, the deputy governor, the chief of staff, the speaker of the house, all of them were there. It's an honor. I preached for about 10 years. Coming senior man in Bible study until I met Apostle Arum of Sir. He came, he held my hand, he said, you have not started. <laughs> I didn't understand what he was saying. I have not started. How? I wanted to tell him I've been preaching. But I said, okay, let me tell him who I am. I said, I'm a seer. He said, when you enter your first season, I will tell you. I got angry. I wanted to go. The Holy Ghost advised me to stay. <laughs> the same Holy Ghost that all of us hear. The same Father that all of us pray to. He advised me to stay. And I stayed after four years. He came. He said, the rod of the apostolic is resting on you now. And he sent me for a meeting in NYC orientation camp. And on my birthday in 2019, he said, you have received the apostolic rod. That was the same year the Lord came and told me to begin to announce you. Does it mean God's calendar depends on what other men tell me? He said, the heir, so long as he's a child, different nothing from a servant though he be lord of all therefore the father places him under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father you will stay under setting me until they approve of you heaven will not approve of you you will argue it by arrogance time will tell you you are wrong and when he told me the time has come in one year I had more than 250 invitations I say this with all humility, but I need to confer a point to you, especially most of you who are young here and trusting God. No pride attached. Because we don't do what we do by any special reason. It's the mercy of God. The same message I've been preaching for many years. A man came and said, this is the time. God echoed it. The time has come. And suddenly, suddenly, a wind broke out. Every time you resist men, you are in trouble. Jesus, the word of God, the Bible says he went to John to be baptized. What do you mean? How can you, the word of God, go to a man? Even John said, this is not right. Jesus said, suffer it to be so for now. Thus, it becometh us to fulfill our righteousness. The moment Jesus allowed himself to be baptized, as he came out praying, the Bible said, the heavens were open. He had been praying for close to 30 years. How come the heaven only opened when he went to submit to John? It's a law in the kingdom. Men are carriers of God. And there are some you must encounter for the dimensions of God in your spirit to break out. It could be a father, it could be a brother, it could be a friend. But you must see him as the man God wants you to meet. The Bible says without every contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. When you've received an encounter, you've caught fire. How to keep the fire burning? One is by waiting upon the Lord. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 28 to 31. Have you not heard? Has it not been said to you that the everlasting God fainted not? Neither is he weary. He giveth power to the faith and not to them that have no might. He increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord. They renew their strength. They mount up with wings like the eagles. They run, they are not weary. They walk, they don't faint. Luke 24, 49. Tarry in Jerusalem until you are endued with power. If you don't develop the act of waiting, you can never be set on fire. Because when we wait, what happens to us is that we are given the privilege to behold Him. And when you behold Him, you are changed. 2 Corinthians 3, 18, he said, as we behold him with unveiled faces, we are changed. When you see a man sustaining the fire of God, he's, a, he's an expert in waiting. He's an expert. He does it like the way he wakes up every morning. He knows how to hide. The Bible will say Jesus sneaked out from the crowd and went to the mountain. A crusade, he ministered in the evening. 
Everybody was healed. The crowd gathered again and he sneaked and went to the mountain. I thought the goal is to gather crowd. If you don't wait, you have nothing to give your word. How do you keep the fire burning? Be given to prayers. Acts chapter 6 verse 4. We will not attend to tables. We will give ourselves to prayer and the ministry of the word. Every time we pray, we cause our spirit man to glow. In Matthew 17 verse 2, as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. His raiment glistered. When you pray, what you do is that you wear the garment of heaven. The devil will know. Men may not see, but the devil knows. When you come out from the place of prayer, you glow. That's why most times as Jesus comes from the prayer room, the demons see him and they begin to scream. They begin to scream. What have thou to do with us? He had prayed. You glow. The Bible says Moses wished not that his face shone. He had been with the Lord. He had been with the Lord. You carry the flame of his, of his throne and you bring it to your world. When he said, any man that have entered there, when he comes out, he comes with it. Give it to prayer. Totally. Give it to the world. Luke 18 verse 1. He said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. But in Matthew chapter 4 verse 4. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Give us this day our daily bread. So if we receive daily bread every day, then we must eat the word every day. I don't have time. So how do you keep the fire? Keep going. Luke 1 verse 80. John was in the wilderness until the day of his showing forth. But why was he fervent there? He grew and worked strong in the spirit. Luke chapter 2 verse 40. The child Jesus grew and worked strong in spirit. He grew in the grace of God. If you don't grow, see, there's, it's a pathetic thing for the same temptation that have been pulling you down for five years to still pull you down now. Grow up. When I was a child, it was impossible for my leg to be neat. If you see me during Hamatan, you will laugh. The leg will not only be dirty, it will be caught everywhere. They will try. Sometimes they will take, we will take our bath and then we will stay indoors till 12. Give us one hour. When we come outside from it, the leg to the knee is white and dusty. Even if we bath five times in a day, the leg will be dirty. Now, even if you don't take your bath for two days, your leg is neat. You know why you have grown. You don't play with sand anymore. Grow up! You want to keep the fire burning. How do we grow? By beholding him every day. So waiting is directly attached to growing. When you see him, you become like him. Finally, how do you keep the fire burning? Walking in obedience and the fear of the Lord. In Proverbs chapter 1 verse 23, he said, Turn to my rebuke and I will pour out my spirit upon you. Every time a man obeys the Lord, the Holy Ghost is released. In Acts chapter 5 verse 32, Peter spoke about the Holy Ghost that is given to them that obey him. Them that obey him. I don't have time to tell you the quenchers of fire. But I'll mention it. One, disappointment. Two, offense. Three, busyness. Four, distraction. Five, sin. These are quenchers of the fire of God. You may, more be, you may not be sinning, but watch movie for two weeks. When you come back to the prayer room, you will discover that one hour will become like one year. Quenchers. Stay on Facebook every day for two weeks. You will be shocked. You will come back and you will start desiring the things you are dead. Be a man that accepts offense all the time. Your heart will be heavy. He said, put aside every weight that does easily beset us and run the race with patience. Quench us of fire. But we must keep our fire burning. The last way to keep your fire burning is by praise. 
He said, everything that has breath, let it praise the Lord. Psalm 150 verse 6. In Psalm 92 verse 1 and 10. He says, it's a good thing to praise the Lord. Morning and evening we should give thanks to His holy works. And in verse 10 he says, and the Lord shall anoint my head with fresh oil, and my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of the unicorn. When you see a man who praises God all the time, he's on fire. Circumstances can't tame him. Romans chapter 8, verse 18 to 20. Against hope, believe in hope. That was Abraham. He staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith, giving thanks to the Lord. This morning, in the next two minutes, rise to your feet.